HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Fletcher Tilton, Attorneys at Law, serving Central Massachusetts and beyond with responsive solutions. Integrity, leadership, and excellence, Fletcher Tilton. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, middle school assistant principal Mary Ellen Grady announces she will be running the Boston Marathon. Civil War book author Tom E. C. Ellis Jr. gave a presentation about what life was like in Hopkinton during the Civil War. We get you caught up to date with Hiller's sports and revisit the 300th anniversary opening ceremony with an interesting piece of history behind the Boston Marathon. But first, a beloved supermarket in town that has been around 70 years announced they will be closing their doors. According to local sources, President of Colella's Dale Danahy has announced that after 70 years, Colella's supermarket will be closing their business at 61 Main Street. The market began in 1945 by Daniel E. Colella with the original store located at 34 Main Street. The market moved to the current location at 61 Main Street in 1955. Three of the six sisters in the family currently still work in the business, Dale Danahy, Diane McGrath, and Sandy Varnum. In addition to their groceries, bakery, and deli, Colella's is known for helping dozens of community organizations and their parking lot is home to the annual Boy Scout Troop 1 Christmas tree sale as well as the Snappy Dogs hot dog stand. Colella's has played a big part in the Hopkinton community and will be missed by many. Very unfortunate to hear that such a long-standing and well-known local business will be closing down. Stay tuned to HCAM News and our website HCAM.TV for more information on Colella's. The 300th Anniversary Committee hosted Civil War book author Tom A.C. Ellis Jr. at the Hopkinton Historical Society. A great turnout was on hand as Tom talked about life in Hopkinton during the Civil War. Many of the women working in the hospitals uh, caught malaria, yellow fever, whatever type of disease was going on, the women caught it and a lot of women died as a result of that. The Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Committee hosted Tom A. C. Ellis Jr., a book author who has done countless research and wrote about the Civil War in many local communities, including Framingham, Medway, Millis, and Hopkinton. Tom told stories of what life was like during the Civil War in Hopkinton and talked about the harsh reality of what was a very tough time in U.S. history. A Frenchman by the name of Minnie invented this where it was hollow in the back and it would, and there was like three slices almost like a it was conical shaped so that when you fired the the gases from the fire would expand the back of the shell to the rifling and it would rifle right out um, when it hit you when it when it hit your body it hit your arm it would just shatter your arm there's nothing they could do there's a, so the doctors got the name of sawbones because with a shattered arm or shattered leg there's absolutely nothing to do but cut it off. I asked Tom how he got started with his research and book writing. I'll, I'll go way back to when my son was about 14 years old. Uh, he came to me with, uh, he wanted to do Civil War reenactment. So I said, hey, what the heck, I could have to be camped out with my son all weekend long for all summer long instead of hanging around malls and so on. I couldn't pass that opportunity up, so. He, he stuck with it for a few years and then he got tired of it. And I stayed on and I became the adjutant general of the, uh, the Union Confederate Volunteers of New England. 
I became the uh, adjutant general, and I was, at that time, I was just organizing events, and I was in charge of the safety of those events. And then I got to be, I was just getting too old to go out and do that, so I, I decided to just do research. And once I retired, I realized there was a lot of towns that have a very rich history, like Hopkinton. Nothing's written about it, so I figured out, it takes me about a year and a half to do a town. And I spent about a year and a half in a town, doing the town. I mean, there's no cost to the town, and and uh, and I do it. It's kind of I'm retired. It keeps my wheels turning. It keeps me busy, and I enjoy doing it. And I think it's something that's very important. I think it's something that uh, it's not only important is it is it a, is it a resource for people now, but in the future, it's good to have this recorded. Uh, the book is about 400 pages. It lists everybody in Hopkinton that, that served. Uh, it's, it gives the history of all the soldiers, the town, what the town did, how the town reacted to situations. And it's very well indexed, so if you want to look for one of your family members, you can find it. And, and on the back there's some reviews in the book, which we've, we've had some very good reviews in the book. This is the first book that I wrote. It's on the Andrew Shop Shoes. There were two sharpshooter companies from Massachusetts that were formed and originally was, were to be in the national Berdan sharpshooters. When Governor Andrews found out that they were going to be in the Berdan sharpshooters, he pulled them back and he sent them out with Massachusetts regiment. So Massachusetts is probably the only, the only state that had their own sharpshooters out there. And uh, they they were in so many they were in so many different situations and so many different regiments. Their history was never written, so I wrote their history. And that's this was published by McFarland Publishers down in uh, the Carolinas. For more information, you can check out Tom Ellis, CivilWarAuthor.com. Hopkinton Middle School Assistant Principal Mary Ellen Grady has put countless hours and a lot of effort into the Sky's the Limit project. The goal of the project is to raise money to develop the courtyard at the middle school to allow students to use it for educational and leisurely activities. A good amount of work has already been done on the courtyard, but the fundraising continues. For the latest fundraising effort, Grady announced she will be running the Boston Marathon on behalf of the Sky's the Limit Courtyard Project. I'm running the Boston Marathon this year for the Sky's the Limit, which is our courtyard project that we've been working on. And um, I actually, we got bibs last year to do it, and I had it in my head that maybe I could train and get ready for it last year. And I got pneumonia, and so I didn't even mention it. And then this year, I, you know, Miss Mercier, who is one of our teachers, ran for it la us last year, and I was thinking, oh, God, I would love to, to get a bib and run officially. Um, it was more than, I thought it was more than 20 years ago, but I think it's more than 25 years ago, closer to that, that I ran two Bostons in a row, but I ran as a bandit runner. Um, and I always wanted to run officially. And this year is, uh, what I did this summer was, I had an opportunity to do a Couch to 5K program through the Milford Community Youth Program, which is my hometown now. And I did it with my daughter, and um, we did the 5K in September, and I just kept running. And I kept it in my mind. Uh, th the only race that ever mattered to me was the Boston Marathon, like the 5Ks. And I, I have done a lot of different races, you know, earlier um, when I was younger. And I never was running for anything except to do Boston because I have such a passion for it. Um, as a family, we used to go every year to watch the Boston Marathon. It was a big deal. Um, I remember one year going in my uncle's uh, convertible and the kids, we, we were sitting all on the back of the convertible at the Denison and watching all the runners go by. And, you know, I'd look for Johnny Kelly every year, who I'd be so excited to see because he was like a celebrity to me. And um, so, I, you know, I thought to myself, it would be great this year if I could do it. So I did the summer program, and I just kept running. And finally, in January, when I knew that my mileage was getting up and I knew that I had the legs and the, you know, the air to do it, um, I asked if I could run f under our bib number that we received from the town. And the uh, committee that 
I work with, all of the women that I work with were overwhelmingly um, pleased and excited about that. So I have the official number and I'm running on April 20th for The Sky's the Limit and it's a, a passion of mine. And I thought what a great thing to do because I get to, to take the passion. My passion is not for running truthfully. My passion is for the idea of the marathon and, and what you have to give in the training that you do. And um, I admire the people who, who have run it, you know, and come before me and, you know, Jean Jean uh, Joan Benoit Samuelson, I like followed her career and um, it up uh, um, pipping the woman who ran, ran and won three times the only woman who did that I um, got I, I've never been on Facebook or Twitter and I just did a Facebook and Twitter account to try to get you know people interested in supporting me and she posted somehow somebody connected me with her I think it must have been Miss Pinto but she um, wrote back to me and I, I got so excited. She, I wrote, read an article and I just wrote a comment on the article. She wrote back to me three times and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Because um, I, I remember her story so vividly. So it was like, and, and of course I wrote to my kids and um, my friends and said, guess who wrote to me? <laughs> this is so, so cool. And uh, they were very excited about it too. So I feel like I get to combine the passion that I have of making this space available for our kids and I've wanted this as a teacher here first for 14 years I would ask the kids you know what is it that you want in our school what can we do to improve and what they always wanted was a space for them just to hang out um, to to you know gather to be with your friends and you know like I feel like as kids we had that you could go to somebody's front porch or backyard or whatever and things are so different today um, you know, they, where they go is Bill's Pizza or downtown, and um, not that there's, you know, I mean, that's fine, but it's not their place. So I thought, would it, wouldn't it be great to have this beautiful space that we have here that's not used? The only entrance was a boys' room that you could go through, so you can't get there. Um, if we could have that open to the kids and have it as a place that they can go um, and, you know, just call their own and then to create this space that could be an extended learning environment, but also a place after school to sit and read or hang out with your friends and be supervised and enclosed and out in the fresh air, which is so awesome to me. We will have more of the interview with Mary Ellen Grady in the coming weeks on HCAM News. Coming up after a quick break, Courtney will have our HCAM Insider. You will see some sights and sounds from the boys basketball and cheerleaders senior night in our sports report and also hear from state senator Karen Spilka as she talked about how Greece and Hopkinton have developed a relationship through the Boston Marathon. A lot more to come on HCAM News. Don't move. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participating in nominating your HHS grad. Welcome back to HKM News. With all the snow on the ground, it may be tough to believe, but the high school winter sports season is nearing its end. In our latest sports report, the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team and cheerleaders celebrated senior night, followed by a tremendous basketball game. In sports, Hopkinton won a couple TVL championships. The Hopkinton swimming and diving team won their fifth straight TVL title. The Hopkinton Hillers swim and dive team not only won the TVL championship, but displayed great sportsmanship throughout the season and was rewarded by the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association with the Swimming Sportsmanship Award. The Hopkinton Hillers girls took home the TVL indoor track and field championship, outscoring Norton 92-83. The Hopkinton Hillers met up with undefeated Westwood Wolverines on senior night. Before we get to the highlights, here is a look at the senior night festivities. Uh, future competitions. I'm going to quickly turn it over to the cheerleading coach. Coach Zwang is going to come up to honor the senior cheerleaders, and then we'll do the senior boys. Coach Zwang. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. First, I want to wish the boys varsity basketball team the best of luck this evening and 
the rest of your season. I also want to commend the varsity cheerleaders, not just for their preparation for games, but for their preparation for our competitive season, which kicks off this Sunday at Whitman Hanson at 4 o'clock. This season, we will be also defending our fourth or third consecutive, going for our fourth consecutive Tri-Valley League Championship. Our successes would not at all be possible without our four senior cheerleaders. They have been incredibly committed, dedicated, passionate, and shown a ton of heart in the four years they've cheered for us. So thank you, girls. I'm going to start with Lauren Cameron with her parents, Kathy and Rick. Next, we have Rachel Damore with her parents, Liz and Andrew. Next, we have Savannah Schultz with her mom, Gail. There's a reason for the delay. And last but certainly not least, Senior Captain Kim Cardillo with her parents, Cindy and John. Thanks, girls. A few other people that I'd like to thank before we call out the seniors. I'd like to thank our senior managers for four great years. They did a fantastic job all four years. So I'd like to thank Kendra LePage and Riley Kopp. Right over here. Okay, now to recognize the senior players for their four years in the program. The first one I'd like to call out would be Mike Malou with his parents, Joseph and Rima. Next is Chase Lampert with his parents, Jerry and Sue. This is Mitch Nagel and parents, Brad and Kathy. Next is Hayden Pereira with his mom, Tiffany. And Patrick Ryan with his parents, John and Gail. The Hillers put on a senior night show and gave the undefeated Wolverines all they could handle. Matt Allegretta puts this one in for Westwood to make it 33 to 31. That would be the score at the half. Late in the fourth quarter, Hopkinton led 60-57. to Will Jessup for three, trying to tie, and he draws the foul. Jessup hit all three free throws to send it into overtime. Westwood led 66-61 to at one point in overtime, but Hopkinton responded. Matlock hits this two to put Hopkinton down by one, 68-67. to Then the Hillers turn it over on an errant pass, but Westwood misses both free throws. Jake Doherty draws the foul for two free throws. First shot is no good. Second free throw, mm, good. That sends the game to the second overtime with the score tied at 68. Matt Locke with the layup to put Hopkinton within 172 to 71. And this free throw put Westwood up 77 to 74 with two seconds left. Final chance for the Hillers. The pass to Pereira. The Pereira of a shot, and it's no good. Westwood wins an epic battle, 77-74. Matt Locke had 23 points for the Hopkinton Hillers, while Matt Allegretta had 29 points for Westwood. Hopkinton fell to 8-8, eight and eight, while Westwood improved to 16-0. and oh. On Saturday, February 7th, Hillers Hockey beat Ashland 6-2 to improve to 6-8 and 2 on the season. The following players each had one goal and one assist. Owen Delaney, Brandon O'Leary, Brandon Carty, and Kim Finlayson. Stay tuned to HCAM News, our website hcam.tv, and also our Facebook and Twitter pages, as we will have constant Hiller Sports updates as we near playoff time. At the 300th anniversary opening ceremony, State Senator Karen Spilka spoke of the strong relationship Hopkinton has made with the country Greece through the Boston Marathon. But first, we show you some interesting history you may not have known about the marathon. It is believed by many the name of the athletic long distance endurance race, otherwise known as the marathon, comes from the legend of a Greek runner who was sent from Marathon to Athens, Greece to announce that the Persians had been defeated in the Battle of Marathon back on 490 BC. The most famous marathon today began in 1897 and is held on Patriots Day. The Boston Marathon, which since 1924 has started in Hopkinton and finished in Copley Square in Boston. Greece and Hopkinton have built and maintained 
a strong connection through the marathon. State Senator Karen Spilka spoke of the strong relationship at the 300th anniversary opening ceremony, referring to Marathon Greece as a sister city to Hopkinton. Every April we display to the entire world, it's not just a Massachusetts event anymore, but it's, it's the whole world, our community pride and our shared values of perseverance, collaboration, and the human connection when we host the Boston Marathon. I'm very proud of their sister city uh, relationship with Marathon Greece, and this relationship reflects our two towns' deep connections and our shared commitment to democracy and peace. I'm honored that I had the opportunity to even visit the beautiful town of, uh, of Marathon Greece and develop a relationship. It really holds a special spot in my heart, uh, the, the relationship with former Mayor uh, Spiro Zagaris and his wife Dina. And it's wonderful that we can still Facebook each other very frequently and keep in touch. It's also an honor to call Dimitri Kyriakides a friend uh, the worldwide goodwill ambassador for the marathon and uh, really has been a tremendous friend to, to Hopkinton as well. And every time I go by and see the statue near Western Nurseries, it's wonderful to see this, the symbol of the spirit of the marathon and all that it stands for and our town's connection to Greece. Congratulations to Hopkinton residents, families, and all of the leaders on this momentous occasion. I like to think of myself as a Hopkinton resident, actually. Uh, for those that know me, I live in Ashland. Uh, it's probably at 26 of the 26.2 miles from Boston. Literally, my house was in Hopkinton uh, until Ashland broke off in 1846. Uh, so I do consider myself sort of an honorary Hopkinton resident. Here's to many, many more years of the great innovation, community engagement, pride, and prosperity. May we continue to thrive as a strong, dynamic, and innovative community for at least another 300 years and for many, many generations to come. Thank you very much. All year long, Hockington will be celebrating the 300th anniversary. Stay tuned to HCAM for all the news and events surrounding the tercentennial celebration. For everything else you should stay tuned for, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, to fill you in on what's coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Sunday, February 22nd at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting held on the 18th will air. On Monday, February 23rd at 7 p.m., the first of the two Ashland and Hopkinton Fire Collaboration Public Forums will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, February 24th at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will also air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, February 25th at 11 a.m., historian Tom A.C. Ellis Jr. shares what life in Hopkinton was like during the Civil War. At 8.30 p.m., Dave Phillips sits down with host Tim Kilduff to discuss Hopkinton Gourmet in business matters. I looked at the shop in uh, 2005, and, um, and that was what prompted me to take ownership um, at the tail end of that year. And uh, I've been there since, since then. In a new studio session live, Susan Lee performs folk songs with a rock and roll flair on Thursday, February 26th at 4.30 p.m. Getting out of line, gonna quiet this old mind, try and calm this raging sea. Take a little time, leave my sorrows far behind. Well. Don't you worry about me. At 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee will air live on HCAM Ed. At 7 p.m., the Second Fire Collaboration Public Forum will air live on HCAM TV. In a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry on Friday, February 27th at 6.30 p.m., audience members shine as they take a turn at the podium to share original poetry, stories, and songs. Don't you know who I am? 
nights when I see your shade drawn and you are sitting pen in hand. I'm the cat you call upon. At 7.30 p.m., Ashley Olofsson discusses the impact media has on young boys and girls in stage 3250. Boys and girls are brought to speak differently. Girls learn not to talk about their strengths because they'll be gossiped about. And boys learn to negotiate in order to gain power and social status. This is happening at such a young age. They're already learning this. And of course, this discouragement of speech has, long has harmful long-term consequences. And on Sunday, March 1st at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from February 23rd will air. Winter sports are wrapping up and it's almost playoff time. To see if the Hillers have made it into the playoffs and to check for game dates and times, visit hcam.tv slash education and hcam.tv slash schedule. Do you want the HCAM Insider delivered straight to your inbox every week? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo, story idea, or perhaps you just want to vent about something happening in town, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and go Hillers. Yeah.